Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to The Foot Accountant's Endgame Club Tour. We're going to take a look through my club today and just talk about my year of FIFA 21 in general. Talk about all of our years of FIFA 21. Summarize the year in terms of content, objectives, uh, in terms of how it affected my ultimate team. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of your guys' squads as well. I've been put, I put out a tweet. A lot of you guys responded to it. And pretty soon, I'm also going to have some videos showing your guys' flexing some of your guys' endgame squads because it's just really cool to see all of the grind that we have put in from last September, last October, all the way until now, heading into FIFA 22, just to see the coins we have able to amass, the clubs that we have been able to achieve. And also, again, speaking of coins and stuff, taking a look at transfer profit, my best wins in terms of trading for the year, my best losses, right? <laughs> Some big losses this year, but that's part of trading. And also just take a look at how this team compares to my end game squad from previous years and maybe some of the things I wish I would have done better this year or some other things I thought I got better at this year. So without further ado, we'll take a look at the squad first. I'm going to talk through it just a little bit and then we'll move around and do some other comparisons. But this is my end game 197 squad. Of course, there's no 99 rated cards in here except for the messy SBC. And again, that was one thing that failed me inside of FIFA 21. I was never able to pack a 99 rated item. I failed last. I've actually, I failed. I've never packed a 99 rated card. FIFA 18, 19, never done it. Never done it. I've gotten close with some 98s, and I, but I've never done it. So that's a bit unfortunate. But we go again. At least I got this 99 Messi, which of course is one of the most crazy SBCs we have ever seen. Obviously a really solid team. A lot of you guys have teams with some of these similar cards in them. This end of an era Ramos is obviously a cracked out card as well in a lot of people's squads. Um, I guess the biggest club legend that is in my starting 11 is this Marcus Rashford Tots card. And this is what I would look at you and say is either my number one or number two, my biggest pack pull of the year in terms of how much he was when I packed him and just the time of the game and how useful of a card he is. He still makes my starting 11, 241 games play, which is a lot for the amount of games that I have played this year. Uh, and this guy's awesome, right? The five-star skill moves. Of course, Rashford, from the start of the game this year, his gold card, 85 rated, was just so, so good. Um, people are going to like to use him in FIFA 22 this year as well because of those five-star skills, I think, starting off the bat. So, again, Rashford was a huge card this year in FIFA, and being able to pack him when he was about 3 million coins during Premier League Tots was insane. So that was a GG. Really liked that card throughout the year this year. Plays a, a mean left mid in a 3-5-2. I really like the 3-5-2 formation. Towards the end of the, of the year this year, I always used to play the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, and I kind of branched out to the 3-5-2, and I actually really enjoy that for some really fun attacking scenarios and stuff like that. But those are probably the biggest two club legends right now, uh, would be the Messi and the Rashford. Now let's take a look at the I want to take a break from the team. You know, it's dumb to look at the team for forever, right? We're about the menus here, not just the gameplay. I want to take a look at transfer profit and talk market stuff a little bit throughout this year as well. I had 56 million transfer profit this year in FIFA 21, which is definitely not my best, right? I've actually gone down. FIFA 19 was my first real full year trading hard, and I hit top 100 on Xbox. I was 80 million transfer profit to end that year off. I believe last year, and my first year on PlayStation in FIFA 20, I hit 65 million transfer profit, and then this year, uh, I hit 56 million, which is definitely not where I want to be, but... Uh, basically, what is it? 40 million of that transfer profit came between the end of January and basically the end of the team of the season. I kind of stopped trading at the end of the team of the season. I did a few things after that heading into like PTG and summer stars, but like I've, I haven't gone above 55 in the last two months. So it's been a really slow going, but I really think this year, the thing that I learned the most about the transfer market and the thing that I was able to profit off of the most were icons. And I think that's a really big spot for me in FIFA 22. I love trading with icons in FIFA 19 and that attributed to my top 100 success on the Xbox with 80 million transfer profit. And I, I don't want to set a goal for FIFA 22, but I would love to see triple digits. I would love to see a hundred million. And of course, this being my first full year of doing uh, this FIFA content creation full time, I'm going to have more time than ever to be trading um, and to be putting into actually making market moves myself. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm trying to go for a hundred mil this year. That's kind of like my goal in the back of my head, but we'll see what happens, right? Of course, life happens. So, and you know, 
100 million is a lot, but I think it's very doable because again, I'm just entering a new season where I'm able to spend a lot more time doing this than I have been in the past few years. So I'm really excited this year for FIFA 22. Hopefully do get that 100 million mark. Uh, and I would just love to have the amount of coins that that would bring along with it. But icons were my biggest money maker inside of this year. And a, a couple screenshots. I think the number one place where I made coins in the second half of the year this year, again, as I said, I was only on about 1.5 million coins heading into team of the year. I put myself down to 500K at the end of January when team of the year was over. I had 500,000 coins and I said, man, I need coins to get to team of the season. So I traded from 500K all the way up to about eight and a half, almost nine mil. I never hit 10 mil, but I went to eight and a half or nine million coins over that, what would that be like three and a half to four month time frame. So that was where I really, really grinded. I went from 15 million transfer profit all the way up to almost 50. That was my big second half of the year grind. And I did a lot of icon flips on promo Fridays because there was always panic, whether it was in packs or out of packs cards. The number one card, and it's actually not on my transfer list showing right here, but the number one card that I traded with on promo Fl Fridays was actually Baby R9. I flipped Baby R9 so many times this year in FIFA um, from an out of packs per perspective because the baby icons went out of packs in like what, December? or something like that. And this baby R9, 90 R9, I mean, I flipped him so many times on Promo Fridays because it's R9, right? It's the cheapest version. People want to get him in their teams and he's, he's usable until like team of the season. So I was flipping that card so much, but icons were again, one of the main places where I made coins this past year. And I expect that to be the same way for me making coins in FIBA 22 as well. But I think the one thing that I learned the most in terms of just a market movement this year is just purely panic, man. I mean, I specifically remember remember road to the final cards and it just when there is panic selling and when a card gets too low i feel like i really started to get a grasp for cards when they got too low this year and i didn't always pull the trigger when i saw that stuff but now i feel like after seeing it move so much in fifa 21 i'm going to be able and have a lot more confidence to pull the trigger in fifa 22 i specifically remember this renato sanchez card after uh he was no longer going to be a live item and leo were knocked out of the europa league um, that he went like a crazy, crazy drop. And I remember looking at the price and like, man, that's going to be the buy price. And sure enough, it hit that low point and rebounded back. I did buy one and I did make profit off of that card. But um, just, just knowing a lot more about those crazy, the panic selling and the bounce back, right? Just knowing when cards are rare enough to hit that low and then bounce back, that's probably one of the hardest and most advanced ways to trade. And feeling like I have that down pretty well, for this past year, FIFA 21, I think it's going to help out so much in FIFA 22 because that is just going to be that market movement with the panic selling and then the buyback is going to be so prevalent this year in 22. I can already see it because again, so many people are getting good at like just the regular trading methods like fluctuation trading and trading with chemistry styles and all that sort of stuff. I really, really feel like getting, getting to be able to trade with cards that are just being panic sold or just noticing those little short-term flips like i'm talking five to ten hour time frames maybe half a day where a card is is either dropping off for, for whatever reason and knowing like okay there's going to still be demand here for this card to, to bounce back up or whether that card is really rare uh specifically like trading with icons and panic selling right i mean i remember stoikov prime stoikov prime when they dropped prime icon moments uh, this guy, his prime card just absolutely dumped and his moments card was going to be coming on the market. And this guy dropped like three, 400,000 coins. And I just sat here, so calm and cool, collected it. And I was like, man, I know this is bouncing back because you know, day one, when the new cards come out, that those icon moments are barely entering the market. Their pack supply is like nothing. And they're so expensive, right? They're so expensive early on. So um, I made a lot of coins on that. I remember a prime stoic I flipped that I bought it for like one point. I think I bought it for like 1.3 mil and sold it for like 1.7 on that same day or something like that. It was a crazy, it was a crazy like, you know, 30 minute fluctuation. That's the stuff that I feel like I really got better at this year. And I'm excited to take that knowledge going forward into FIFA 22. Now, speaking of icons, I also had my biggest ever, my biggest loss on the year, which wasn't my biggest ever loss, um, was definitely on Moments Blanc. I bought a Moments Blanc, which sounds crazy to look at now. And his price is 170K. I bought this Moments Blanc card for 2.2 mil and I ended up selling it. I think it was for like one point, like 1.5 
or 1.6. And it was right after Moments Blanc had dropped. And this is where I learned from that trade because Moments Blanc was very good. He was very, very good, very OP in FIFA 20, but it was Desai this year in FIFA 21 who was better. And I kind of failed to take that into uh, consideration when I was trading with this Blanc card right after he first came out. And also, number one thing I learned too, don't try to trade with center backs when they first get dropped in the game. Like literally he had just come out in packs. It was on a Friday night. I was like, man, this Blanc is going to get rare. I'm going to buy him at 2-2. I just saw him like 15 minutes ago, sell at 2-7. I'm going to buy him at 2-2 and sell him at 2-6. And boom, it'll be a nice flip. I'll make a couple hundred K and be very happy with it. Yes, a risky trade. But again, what happened was he was just way too overvalued, even for that start of the game. So I lost a lot of coins right there. Lesson learned, right? But that's how you get better at trading. You learn the lesson, you take the loss, and you move on from it. So that was my biggest loss on the year right there. But again, um, trading this year was definitely a lot of a lot of just flips, a lot of fluctuations. Um, I didn't do a lot of rash investing this year. I know a lot of people made coins off of um, whether it was fodder or whether it was like, boom, this SBC gets released. Uh, so like this Omtiti gets released. This is theoretical. Let's say, you know, uh, you know, Varane and Militao might have dropped a little bit when this came out, but you think, okay, boom, French center backs, if this is good value, that's going to drop those on the market. Links to this card are going to go up. I didn't trade a lot with that this year. It's hard to do it on stream if I'm being completely honest, but that's a really, really, really great way to make quick coins almost every day, especially in the second half of the year when they're constantly releasing new SBCs and new cards and new content. There's always uh, what we call link and um, what's the other word? Comp, not compliment, substitute. Substitute cards and cards that link, right? So a substitute would be like, um, Titty drops in the game. He is a substitute for Varane and Militao. But then you have a complimentary or a link investment. It's like, okay, uh, you have Yorente, PTG, which maybe went up a little bit, or you know, a, another Ferdinand Mendy special card would have maybe gone up a little bit with a link to him, Titi. So that's the kind of trading I think is still going to be very viable in, in FIFA 22. And I hope to get a little bit better at that myself. But that rash investing was, I know a lot of people made a lot of coins off of that this year, buying and then quickly selling after in the hype. So that's kind of the trading side of things. You look at my record, 506 wins, 39 draws, 341 losses typical year for me. I mean, I usually don't ever play more than a thousand games. I think the last time it hit over 1k, the only two times it hit over 1k were in FIFA 18 and FIFA 19. I really, I really grind in FIFA 19 a lot. Um, and you know, a solid 500 win year for me. I, I don't even know if I played a full weekend of champs during the year. I hit gold three, like one time champs for me this year. It just, I don't know, man. I, I didn't really feel the need to grind foot champions as I maybe did in some of the earlier FIFAs. Um, and that's just the way that it is. I hope FIFA 22, you know, I'm probably going to end up playing more games in 22. I would definitely say this year I'll probably hit over a thousand games again uh, just because of the fact that I'm going to be playing this game more, being more uh, full time, of course, into this than than before. So I expect that number in the top left to go up, which actually in FIBA 22, it, it, from what I've heard, the record doesn't show, right? You have to actually go into the leaderboard section to show your record, which is pretty interesting. But the 197 squad, and this is one thing just about FIBA 22 in general that I find so interesting, or FIBA 21, not interesting, but just crazy. Prices have dropped off so much. This team right here is only worth about 4 mil. It's only worth about 4 million coins. Something's up with these prices right now. 6.9 mil, I think that's messed up, but I mean, so cheap in price compared to some of my last and other FIFA endgame squads. I feel like my squad this year is fine. It's not stupid insane. There's no Neymar. There's no Cristiano. Um, but I think the defense is about as good as it gets. Uh, the midfield with Acuna. I mean, that's he is like the pinnacle of midfields right now at this end game. Uh, I, I feel like Rashford and Chiesa are the two weakest cards in the team, if I'm completely honest. So I feel really good about the team. Absolutely love it. Um, it's just crazy that how it's so cheap in price. So taking a look at my FIFA 20 end game squad, I didn't have the red list pack luck this year that I had in 20. I'll be completely honest. No cappuccino. Last year in FIFA 20, I packed team of the season, Neymar, Mbappe, and Ben Yedder, who was officially as the rat, right? Not as ratty this year, but I packed these three guys in the same night last year. That was my red list pack luck. I did pack team of the year Conte twice. That was a card I used for so, so long. He was a club legend for me. 
um, the Militao SBC, the, the Ramos, Tots, Usman Dembele. This was my end game team last year, which is a 195, but you know, I don't think I had all my high rated over here, so I could have probably got a higher rated squad with all the summer heat cards that you see thrown in here. That was my best in endgame team last year, which I was pretty happy with. Then my FIFA 19 endgame squad, I had a 99 Ronaldo. That was tradable. I bought that. It wasn't packed. Uh, and I actually bought a lot of cards in FIFA 19. I bought this team of the year, Neymar. Bought this team of the year, Mbappe. And then the rest of the team was untradeable, I do believe. But the Mateus SBC, used him for a ton of games. I'm surprised that I have a prime Balak just chilling. I think I used that for chemistry for Ronaldo, but... Um, Man, no, I can't get anybody else better in there than Prime Balak. Like, come on, what am I doing? Moments Cruyff, Alexandro flashback, of course, Militao, his rise uh, to fame in FIFA 19, and then the ladder climber himself, Cannavaro, very overpowered. Uh, but again, 95 Zlatan on the bench, player of the year, Sterling, and uh, Van Dijk was in there. The Tots Ebro was an insane card. I remember using him a lot. Footy's Griezmann was great. Footy's Pogba was pretty good. So FIFA 19 endgame squad, I would say out of these out of these three years, from 19, 20, and 21, I think my best endgame squad is uh, is this one. I packed Moments to Don at the end of the year last year from some sort of icon pack. But I think this is my best endgame squad out of the last three years in FIFA. So again, just to kind of show a little bit of a uh, progression on where my squad has gone, and I'll, look at, I'll show you guys some of the club legends in a second here. This is a screenshot from uh, January 18th. This video was recorded. Team of the Year Preparation number one is the video. And this is my team in January, man. I do a terrible job since I don't play that many games. I do a terrible job of upgrading my team throughout the year. This Ziyech Wants to Watch was from my pre-order Wants to Watch pack. I'm still using Gold Zaha, Gold Musa Sissoko, Gold Bruno, and I have Kleiber and Robin over here on the right side with Baby Petit at center back, Joe Gomez and Yaris. I mean, I was using these guys up until like the what if promo, and then I finally changed my squad up. But I mean, one thing you guys will learn about me if you haven't learned already is that I really don't spend a lot of money on my squads. I like to keep them all in tradable. And I think that with more cards coming out into FIFA 22 via SPCs and objectives, it's going to stay the same, right? I'm not going to spend that many coins on cards. And with more content coming out, it's just easier. You don't have to worry about cards lessening in value, losing a ton of coins and stuff. So I'm probably going to continue to keep it that way heading through the years. But some legendary cards this year in FIFA. I love this Kane, man. Four-star, four-star Kane. He's actually really fun to use. Again, the joke this year is that I only like using trucks, right? Because I like using the slower players that aren't the most meta. Lukaku for me was abs. Look at that. 23 games, 20 goals, 17 assists. This car was mental uh, for me this year. I loved Kane, loved Lukaku. Of course, shout out to my homeboy, Christian Eriksen. I mean, I still, this is probably the last Eriksen card we're going to see unless he ends up playing. I don't know if he will. Um, but man, what an absolute ledge. And I'm glad they gave him this card. Um, if this is his ever last ever ultimate team card, I mean, absolutely bang on cards. So good in game. I'm glad that Denmark got that third win in the Euros to get that upgrade. That was so fantastic to see. Definitely a club legend and, you know, a legend IRL and my brother from another mother since we look almost the same. Anyways, love Christian Eriksen. Love that card for just the outside of FIFA meaning that it has to it. A couple other club legends that I'll show you here. Team of the year Kimmich. Um, I think I packed him... I don't know if I packed two of these, but I know I packed two contacts last year. I don't remember if I packed two Kimmiches this year, but of course, I only put like 1 million coins into upgrade packs during team of the year. I was lucky enough to hit this Kimmich, and he was an absolute stud for me in the second half of the year. I put this Cantona in here as a club legend because I never expected myself to do an SBC as expensive as Cantona, and I actually went out and did that. He was a fun card. Finesse shot's great, but that's kind of when the truck FC jokes kind of came up this year. Joe Hart, I mean, if you guys remember the charity stream we did earlier this year where I put Joe Hart up at uh, at Striker and I was trying to score goals with him, that was legendary. Honestly, in game, pretty pretty bad goalkeeper. Not that good, but 172 games uh, because I used a lot of Spurs links in defense for a large part of the year. And then also David Nera Showdown, uh, um, the most insane super sub throughout this, the whole year of FIFA 20. Uh, one, just absolutely nuts card right there so a few more club legends that i used throughout the year that i was able to keep their cards i loved this trio full birthday cards with podolsky royce and um ozil man i really use these cards i did these sbcs during full birthday because i said hey i want to upgrade the team 
and these guys are going to stick with me until team of the season. Royce, though, was absolutely cracked. Podolski and Royce were really fun, but once we got to team of the season, they definitely were outshone by the quality of cards that came in there. This Moments Dybala was in the team a lot as a 1-9, 190 games played, cracked out item. Of course, I've got his footies now in the squad. Of course, Kleiber and Robin, 327 games played. I think, I don't know exactly who my most capped player for the club is, but I feel like it's one of these two or somebody else that I just looked at. Maybe Kimmich? I think Kimmich might be my most capped player. 389 games, almost 400, which is about half the games this year I would have used Kimmich in the team. So half my games have come after team of the year, which is kind of interesting. But uh, those are definitely all club legends. This Regulon What If card, 218 games played. Used them in center back a decent amount. Same thing with Doherty. 122 games played. Uh, I had this trio going for a while with some other links on the outside with Kleiber. And then I forget who I had a left back, but those guys were solid throughout the year. Of course, a little bit more meaningful because they're Spurs. Elshaw was a great super sub alongside of Nerez. SCN was kind of a club legend. He played CDM for 155 games. Pretty beast of a card. Cristiano Ronaldo's flashback card, 121 games. I don't know how I got that many games with him. This card is doo-doo. I thought it was great right, right away, but just a legendary card, right? So he, of course, is staying in the Panini. Uh, Leroy Fair, 87 rated. I played him a lot in a 4-3-3 formation where I had Kleiber linking to Fair, linking to the um, Robin card. Boateng actually had 164 games played for me. I was surprised to see that many, but this guy was so bad. He was terrible. Zambrata, 109 games played, Icon SBC. Sven Bender, uh, I linked him to Tapsoba and to Boateng a lot. He was a nice card. And then, of course, Mbabu, 110 games played uh, for the club as well. So those are some of the club legends. Um, I think, again, if I had to give you my favorite card for this entire year of FIBA 21, it's probably this guy. Because this man, 389 games played as a CDM, as a CDM in a 4-1-2-1-2, narrow for most of the year. A couple games at 4-4-2 as uh, the defensive midfielder dropping back and staying back. 104 assists. I mean, 37 goals as well. I can't tell you how many times he, with the high attacking work rate, how he slid up through the middle, one through ball in, just that extra guy forward and bang, he cracked home a shot with his 99 long shots and 92 shot power. So... He was a really, really, really great and fun card to use. Probably, again, I would say my favorite card throughout the whole entire year. Rashford would probably be, be second. Um, and then the Endgame Spurs squad got to show this off as well. I think this is about the best Spurs squad you can get um, in this game. The Bale flashback card was so fraudulent, man. So fraudulent. 17 games played. He's terrible. <laughs> the Kane card was great. The Lucas Mora, this guy was actually really, really good when I used him. I bought him during footies when he dropped a lot, but... This Bergwijn card, I remember trading with him when he first came out. A lot of pros used him right away for like the E Premier League. That was a dope card. And Dombele, Dominson Sanchez. Um, and then the footy Sissoko, who just transferred to Watford. So um, no longer at Spurs, but still in the Prem. So nice Prem links. Of course, this Sun card I actually bought for the Endgame squad. He was a lot of fun. Wish I would have been able to use him more. But um, that's a card that I hope to get in FIFA 22 and, and run around with a little bit more there. This Modric card was packed. Trippier is a, of Experts legend. Los Chelsea, I only played with for eight games, which I feel kind of bad about, but his card is decent in game. Then, of course, the Ericsson as well for the past and present Spurs squad. So a pretty nice Spurs team, right? If you look at it in total, pretty nice squad there. So, man, I mean, this year, again, I wish it would tell you how many games of objectives that you have played because, I mean, I did a few objectives like Icon Swaps. Um, I remember doing like the Bellerin, uh, that this is after the league player item that, that um, was on my bench, I think even in that old squad that I looked at. Um, so I kind of wish, kind of wish they would have checked, uh, kept track of some of those, but you know, doing all the objectives and icon swaps this year probably gets me close to somewhere around a thousand games. Cause I think right now I'm in like 800 and I'm actually close to 900 games played. So I think with the objective games and friendlies, probably around a thousand in total. Um, but again, I, I feel like it was a fun year, man. It was a fun year. My club doesn't show it as like the most insane, not no 99 rated players packed, stuff like that. But it was really a fun year. I got to use a lot of cards that I never think I'll, I never thought I would have been able to use. Like this Canton offer is one for me that I really surprised myself going after that SBC. I thought I wouldn't go after it. I made the decision and I followed it through. Um, the Renato Sanchez I've barely used, but he's of course goaded. Using this Kane card is insane. He was he's phenomenal. Um, 
so that was just there was a lot of fun cards i was able to use this year even though we don't central this channel and a lot of what i do around gameplay it was a very fun year and there was a lot of fun cards so i'm excited to see your guys' squads we'll be looking at those very soon but that is my end game club tour i guess i do i will do one more thing i'll take you through what i still have in the club because there's a lot more cards still in here i haven't done that yet forgive me for all the loans i mean some of these guys i've never used i've just packed them like richarlison chiellini the benucci sbc is in here Di Maria, Isak, a lot of these guys, I wouldn't declare them club legends. Varane, I mean, I played one game with him. I just packed him recently. Laporte, Mertens, the Gignac, the Nani, um, Courtois, SBC. Tevez was a fun card. When I used him, he had a pretty good ratio for me. Mateus replaced the Essien that was in the club for a while. Um, I still haven't used Alessandrini like at all. Haven't used De Young. Trent uh, was packed during footies. Um... Vardy was packed during footies. Del Piero was a, he was kind of like a halfway club legend. He scored some insane goals for me this year. Awar was a great SBC. I packed Ben Yedder again. 62 games played though. He just, he just didn't feel the same as he did in previous FIFAs. The Mira card was a really cool one this year. That was a fun SBC from EA. Cannavaro again had to do that one. Coutinho's SBC was a dub. Um, some of the USA cards I still have in here. Haven't gotten rid of, of course. Jude Bellingham's SBC. This one was puzzling for me. I put a lot of effort into getting this done, and he wasn't even that great of a card. So, a bit bummed out on that one, but um, decent card nonetheless. Have any other things in here? Brooks, Altador, yes. I think that is about it for the end game club tour, boys. Yeah, I think that is about it. For all the cards we have had this year, a lot of the club legends. It was a fun year of FIFA, man. It really was. The content stepped up a whole nother level. Yes, there's a lot of things that we hope to see improved in 22, um, but it was a really, really fun year. Really fun year. Uh, and I feel like I have a decent squad to show for it. And I'm always going to remember some of these cards that we had in the club. The 98 Kane is one I'm going to remember for a long time. The Ericsson, the Kimmich, the Joe Hart card, of course, with transfers. A lot of these cards will... A lot of these items with these players will never be able to see again. So that was really fun. It was just a fun year in FIFA in total. So a solid year of FIFA in the books wrapped up. My club really shouldn't change at all. Uh, I have 134K left and a, and a duplicate Alexis Sanchez. So a couple more fodder cards in the club. If EA released anything else through preseason, maybe um, I will go out and try to pack my 99 last chance the Neymar, the Ronaldo, or the Firmino, but I don't see that happening. But that's the Endgame Club Tour. Comment down below what you think, and I'm excited to see your guys' squads very soon. But if you enjoyed this one, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below a few questions, and of course, subscribe if you are new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.